Oh, and that and that starts the show. Uh, so. Uh, welcome to the School of Media Studies, everybody. My name is Robbie Powers. I'm the Director of Student Affairs. Um, most likely, we've communicated in some fashion via email, tours, in-person meetings, accepted student days. Um, and many of you went to some of the awesome events we had today where we did tours of the Making Center, the uh, XRC space. We did uh, a session with the International Field Program. Um, and we had student advisors giving tours of the space today. So if you missed any of that and you want to learn more about any of those programs, definitely connect with our student advisors who are out there checking in on you or myself. Um, but welcome tonight. And um, first off, I always like to say congratulations and welcome to the School of Media Studies. Give everyone a hand, a round of applause. Yeah. Wonderful. We're going to start the evening off um, and I'm going to pass it off to our executive dean, Mary Watson. Hi, thank you. So welcome, everyone. It looks like you're all really relaxed and ready to get started. So I uh, just uh, I'm reminded um, of a story some people told me um, some years ago about when you go to graduate school, the person who is sitting next to you at your um, orientation event on one side or the other is the person you end up being friends for for life. So you can test this proposition <laughs> as you go through the evening. No pressure in keeping, you know, and why is that? It's because uh, this is a time that is exciting, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. It might be a little bit intimidating or scary. It might feel like you know, you're here from another place, and so you need to get acculturated. But people tend to be open at this moment. Um, and so they tend to bond with the people that they meet, maybe not literally sitting next to you today, but you know, in the first week or so, and really find affinities with them. So what you will find here is you are part of an amazing learning community of people who really care about uh, changing the world, about making a difference in the fields that you're working in, and people who are really um, going to be great learning partners with you. So um, welcome to the new school. Um, as Robbie said, I'm executive dean of what we call the Schools of Public Engagement, which in includes a lot of our applied graduate programs, media, writing, international affairs, policy management, and our adult undergraduate program. And this unit that uh, you're joining, this college that you're joining, is actually the current form of the founding division of the new school. And so I want to just say a few words about the history of the new school. I think Robbie has a slide for me, so I, uh, I'm supposed to put that forward. Hang on. Um, so we are celebrating our centennial this year. We're 100. Um, I'm not personally 100, but we are as a university 100. And it's really an exciting um, time to think about what do we mean now vis-a-vis uh, -vis 100 years ago, and frankly, what will we mean looking forward 100 years into the future? So in 1919, those of you who remember your history lessons, um, it was a very complicated time in America. Um, it was a time... Um, when there was um, a post-World War I ethos, there was rising fascism around the world, there were political and social and economic uh, tensions, there were, um, there were issues in the U.S. Um, this was what they called then the Red Summer, which was the summer when many African Americans returning from the war um, were killed in their communities around the country. So 1919 was a very complicated year. Um, and in 1919, a group of faculty decided to leave what they referred to as the old school, Columbia University, to found a university here that um, would stand for a couple of principles. That it would be about um, open access and continuous learning, so the idea that learning was lifelong. So that started our tradition of not just adult learning, but also our tradition of open seminars and public programs. We have about 1,500 public programs per year, so lots of them. Um, it uh, also was a time that um, there was a real desire to not sign what then they were asked to sign at Columbia, which was a loyalty oath agreement um, uh, to the US government. Um, in the context of the post-war uh, phenomenon. And it was also a time to think about what would scholarship and creative practice m mean in the world. And I just want to pause on this one for just a moment because I think that if you reflect back to what the new school was 100 years ago, uh, and, you, and then you ask yourself, well, what's happening in 2019? And it actually turns out that many of these same phenomena 
are still present in our world today. And it is these kinds of global challenges and these kinds of issues that matter in the world that animate our students today just as much as they did 100 years ago. Um, and so this, for, for various ones of you, will mean many things, but over the history of the New School, it's meant that we've um, hosted asylum seekers and refugee scholars through the University in Exile, that we, um, we helped to create an open model of education that was really around democracy and civic life. We blended the arts and music and performance and other kinds of activities together with social science um, and creativity. And in 1975, we founded um, the what's now called the School of Media Studies, which was a, a radical intervention into the idea of media making and what media would mean. So um, it probably doesn't seem obvious to you now, but in 1975, that seemed like kind of a radical idea, um, that media would be a subject that was really worthy of academic study. And uh, they, at that time, used words uh, like new media to mean television, portable video cameras and audio cassettes, I remember those. Um, and some thought that media was sort of a passing fancy or a passing fad, but as it turns out now, as we know, media is ubiquitous. And the way in which we live in the world, we understand the world, the way our culture is made and remade and understood is really mediated um, in the sense of uh, the things that we think about in media studies in, very, in every walk of life that we have. And so the diffusion of this media is not now because media is novel, so you won't be studying about what's novel about it. You'll be studying about unpacking the ubiquity of it. And what does that mean in terms of the, the media theory perspectives about how meaning gets made? What does it mean about technical skills about media? What does it mean about media-driven organizations, media storytelling and digital narrative? And frankly, what does it also mean about unpacking issues of justice and fairness and surveillance and other kinds of topics? And you have amazing faculty who teach things um, including artificial intelligence and virtual and augmented reality, uh, film and transmedia narrative, of course, robotics, um, police surveillance, all kinds of things that you'll find really fascinating. So um, I just want to take a moment then to tell you a little bit about um, the um, class that you're entering. So a few facts about the class, which are always interesting. And then I'll close by reading a some short excerpts from the uh, essays that you wrote in your admissions application. Now, you can take a deep breath because I won't be naming you. <laughs> but I will, just to give you a flavor of who's in the room, I will say a few things about what people said in their application. So uh, it's interesting. If you recognize yourself, you can say, that's me. Or you can say, I don't know what they're talking about. That's not me. <laughs> Um, so, um, first of all, I want to say that you are a truly international class, so in the incoming class this fall, um, your cohort comes from 29 different countries. Yay. <laughs> Including Australia, Bahrain, Belgium, Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, Brazil, China, Canada, Colombia, Dominican Republic, boy, I've got this is like a, that alphabet of nations, hang on, Greece, India, Italy, Indonesia, Jamaica, Kazakhstan, Korea, Mexico, Nigeria, Norway, Russia, Serbia, Sweden, Taiwan, Tanzania, Thailand, the UK, Venezuela, Vietnam, and Zambia. So this is a lot of places. So that's really exciting because that means that you're bringing these voices of media making and storytelling and media management um, from all these international cultures. You also come, many of you from the New York area, from the tri-state area, but also additionally from Arizona, California, Connecticut, Florida, Illinois, Massachusetts, Michigan, Maryland, Missouri. Now I'm going to do the, uh, the uh, uh, that, what is that alphabet of nations thing again? New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, Puerto Rico. And so um, what this tells you is that we have a very diverse audience um, of students who are coming from different geographic and cultural perspectives. We also have students who come from uh, the, in, the inclusive array of identities, um, including gender identities, racial and ethnic identities, religious identities, and all kinds of combinations in between. Um, and all of you are part of the larger story of what the School of Media Studies stands for, about what you're learning, about what we're learning with you, and also about what kind of people need to be telling the stories of our time and who will be remembered um, in these stories. So now on to the couple of essay excerpts. So one of you, 
Look, they got really quiet in here all of a sudden. Uh, came to the New School to better equip yourself as a creative producer um, for an advertising production company. You've worked in the media industry and want to create ethical and inclusive media. Um, they know that the people that are behind the lens influence what is represented to the public and what the public consumes shapes our social norms and values. So that student says they really want to focus uh, on media studies in writing a thesis on gender inequality in the media industry. And they're also looking forward to exploring the topic of gender uh, in the media and specifically mention faculty members Lana Lynn and Linda St. Mark who are back there somewhere in the back. So hello to both of you. Um, another one of your incoming cohort members comes with a background in finance and accounting. So they're looking for a career change and are hoping to uh, use their finance background and blend it with their education from the media management program to really focus their career on media and entertainment. And they say their excitement about coming here is to uh, take advantage of our internship opportunities at places like NBC Universal or Sony uh, Entertainment. They want to make an impact and they want to make sure that media management puts ethics and social responsibility in the management and leadership of organizations. And then finally, another of your classmates comes here in an effort to fight back against what they call social stigma. Um, in 2017, the president of their country began censoring and monitoring media that challenged their point of view on teenage pregnancy. And this person writes, I want to tell the stories of the girls that address these critical issues important to them, particularly the role of their agencies over their bodies, their finances, their relationships, and ultimately their lives. And that person is very much um, looking uh, forward to studying and reconstructing the understanding of television that they consumed as a child and how it challenged or did not challenge patriarchy, gender-based violence, and oppression that their government currently sanctions. And when this child was, uh, when this person was a child, this uh, this program really impacted their life, and they want to make their own films for young people. So this is just, these are just three stories of individuals that you'll have the opportunity to collaborate with. Um, there are many more, and you'll hear more about those stories tonight, but I just want to close by once again welcoming you to the School of Media Studies and saying congratulations. Enjoy. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to pass the mic now to uh, our Dean of the School of Media Studies, uh, Vlad Nikolic. And, uh, and this is working? OK. Um, so welcome, everybody. I'm currently the Dean, but I'm a full-time faculty member uh, at the uh, School of Media Studies. And I'm also a filmmaker, producer, director, and worked with all kinds of genres and, and media. So I'm just going to give you a very brief introduction. So here we are again at newschool.edu at 100. Um, I, Mary already told you so about the 100-year history. I would just add that um, if you go to the um, website address, the newschool.edu slash 100, you will see there will be um, a range of different events and activities, especially in the month of uh, September and October. Uh, free classes and uh, you know talks and all kinds of different events. So I won't list them all here, but if you just go online, you can find them at this um, website. I also wanted to just briefly give you a rundown of, of some of our um, facilities and resources. Uh, but before that, if you haven't already, uh, you should definitely go to smscommons.newschool.edu. So it's a great place that you can find all the resources, both uh, course grid but also about internships, about all kinds of other things, if you haven't been there already. And also newschoolmediastudies.org, or simpler, mediastudies.nyc, where you can see some of our student work, some of the events from um, last year, and you can also see some of our alumni. Just a small range, but you can see kind of what Mary already mentioned, where our students go after uh, they finish the program, which is really a wide range of different professions from uh, academics to you know pro, pro, to media management to creative and so on. So one thing I wanted to highlight is the XR Center. So that's the extra-reality center of the new school. If you uh, were taking part today in, in some of the tours, you have probably seen it already. If you haven't seen it, so this is where uh, some of the classes will happen that um, are dealing with um, virtual reality, augmented, and mixed realities. Uh, but this is also where you can get just an introduction of the different technologies, both of the introductory level, uh, the kind of medium and the more professional level. 
Um, the place that you should definitely see and visit, and you will be there a lot, is the um, 6 East 16th Street, 6th floor. This is where um, we have our innovation center and our um, equipment center. And again, you will see this. I mean, I'm not going to go too much into all these details now. There is an equipment center that's used by the entire university. Uh, but this is our specific space where we have our studio um, to shoot there and also equipment for all the film and advanced uh, production courses and so on. Uh, so, you know, check it out if you haven't already. Um, the Making Center, which is at the Parsons School of Design. Uh, so if you are so inclined to also do some woodworking on the side, you could do that as well. It doesn't have to be all um, only film and media and digital media and so on. So um, this is really, again, uh, more the, um, you can also do 3D printing and some other interesting things. So that's also at your disposal. I'm just listing all these things, but you know, um, really check it out. I mean, this is sometimes students come to their last semester and then they say, oh, I didn't know I could do 3D printing. So, you know, don't let that happen to you because there's really a lot of resources. They're all open to you and you can all um, use them. While I'm at it, and this is also something I'm sure you've heard this before and you'll hear it again, uh, but also keep in mind that you can take classes also outside of the program. So take a look at Parsons, take a look at Milano, at the uh, New School for Social Research, at all these other places because these classes are also open to you. So you don't, you know, if you see a class that's really interesting to you, but it's offered, let's say, at Parsons, you can take that, or the School of Drama, and so on. So the Making Center. Um, so online resources, uh, so besides the um, SMS Commons um, and the NewSchoolMediaStudies.org, so Canvas, as you will see, this is where um, a lot of the information, a lot of your professors will post uh, things in Canvas. It's an online platform that you can all access through the mynewschool.edu. Uh, the LinkedIn Learning, which was formerly lynda.com, which you can access through the New School Library, which is also online resources, mm -hmm. and Adobe Creative Cloud. So all of this, uh, all of these things live on mynewschool.edu. So you have access to Adobe, all the different software programs for free. Um, so you can download them all from mm -hmm. mynewschool.edu. Um, Larabi will talk more about this you know, in a minute. We have a lot of events going on throughout the year not only the, the centennial events, uh, but one thing to look out for is also last next semester, every spring semester, we have something called the Hirshan Artist in Residence, where we bring in a distinguished film and media maker and to do uh, master classes and public screenings. So um, this year, I want to say last year, but it's this year, we had Raul Peck, um, who is the director, the filmmaker of I'm Not Your Negro, which is about James Baldwin, the most famous, but he also did a range of other um, very strong and interesting films. Before that, we had Sean Baker, who did the Florida Project, Tangerine, you know, the first iPhone made, not the first, but the one, the iPhone made film that kind of broke through, John mm -hmm. Waters, um, Dia Pennebecker, and many, many others. So look out for this. The, again, we're going to send out notifications soon once you have confirmed who the artist will be for um, next year. And um, also about graduate minors. So again, something you, sh you can look into if you want to. This is something that will go onto your transcript. If you take three classes from an approved um, graduate minor, the minor that we offer in media studies is transmedia and digital storytelling. Mm -hmm. You can take it even if you're a media studies student, but there are certain uh, requirements, so you should talk to Robbie about that. If you're a media management student, you can take it. Um, there are other minors, and again, you can look this up online, the Impact Entrepreneurship, which you have probably seen, but there are other um, university-wide minors. So this is something if you want to connect, I mean, I'm sure you've heard this and you'll hear this again from your advisors and your faculty. Um, the whole program is very flexible and you'll work with your faculty advisor and you can kind of combine and create different pathways and so on. Um, so, but you, if, you, if you see that you want something to concentrate on that you want as a graduate minor, so this is something to look at because it gives you a certain structure that you can work with within the curriculum. Um, the international field program, so this is something that you can do uh, over the summer. So again, you, you, as you can see, and you can just go online and see international film program working together with the international affairs um, and you know undergraduate students where you go to different uh, places in the world as you can see and there are different uh, projects where our, our students have documented them made uh, documentaries and it kind of together with uh, the field projects that other um, students were doing. 
Um, so this is just a brief outline of things, and I know you're going to remember all of this um, now, and everything Robbie tells you and Donja tells you and so on. Um, but um, again, as I said, what is important is really uh, try to use all the resources, really. You know, don't just think, oh yeah, it's fine and so on, because again, the problem only, you know, things, you know, time goes fast, and you don't want to discover things in the last semester. Um, uh, my name again, Vlad, if you start typing Vlad, I'm the only Vlad, because I'm from a different country, so, um, which is very unusual, my name will pop up, so email me if you have any questions, problems, issues, or what, just want to hang out, you can come to the office, so welcome again. Thank you, everyone. And so uh, that transitions us over to uh, advising here in the School of Media Studies, which we have the wonderful task of working uh, with student advisors and our faculty in the program to connect you with all of those resources and help you start thinking about the experiences, the portfolio items, the research you want to do. If you're thinking about your career goals, how those are going to connect with them. For those of you in the media management program, really thinking about how you can use these tools to enhance your skills as a media entrepreneur, as someone who is going to be managing creative artists in the world. How can we connect these tools together to make the right experience for you? And that takes an effort from a lot of different people in the room and um, that you'll be connecting with. So we have a pretty large ecosystem of advising at the, at the new school. And so in our program, you'll be working with myself and you've mostly, most of you have been in contact with Carolyn Bushell through the program and she'll be connecting with you in the room next door and we have our student advisors here. Um, in the MA program, you'll be connected with someone directly in your research area and in the management program because everyone has such a unique and individualized experience, we'll be referring to you to each faculty mentor as needed with the projects you're working on. And so we have student advisors staffing our media studies advising account. So Basically, there's no excuse for you not to get a question answered and really help develop and curate an individualized plan of study for you that has those interdisciplinary options that uh, Vlad was talking about and takes advantage of all the resources. So these are some really standard housekeeping items. I'm not going to read it to you, but the idea is go to class, connect with your faculty. You're here in part of our program to be part of this community and the best way to do that is to engage in the class. If you're an online student, that means engaging online in the weekly and often multi-days throughout the week uh, postings and discussions that you'll be having. So this program requires your full participation in the cohort and in the engagement in your class because it won't be as rich without your voice in that. Um, but we also know things happen. Life comes up. Uh, we have a hundred other things in our lives that are priorities besides academics, and that's totally normal. So come talk to me if that's something that you're um, thinking about, if that's something that you're struggling with in the sense of balancing you know, your health in school, work in school, maybe you have children in school, other family members that you care for in school. You, know, you won't be the first person who's had to take a minute and say, I'm gonna take a break. So we have lots of um, resources to help you while you're thinking about that process and of course a leave of absence process that um, we can talk through those steps if needed. Basically, I, you know, we wanna be in contact with you throughout the semester if anything's happening and that's we're really your lifeline through that to make sure that you're moving forward with your academics but also making sure that your wellness is at the front of that. Um, again, not really reading this, but uh, there's been a lot of resources online and through the graduate orientation yesterday about academic integrity and honesty. I always like to, to highlight this one piece. Um, our program is highly interdisciplinary. You'll be working on projects amongst multiple courses. So one thing that just to be thinking about is when you're working on a project amongst multiple courses, talk to the faculty about that. Make sure you under, they understand if you're working on a film project or you're working on a business plan, what portions are being connected to which classes and assignments. So that way there's no question about it being one project that's um, being duplicated over again. Um, these are things that you should be reading and looking at and be thinking about as you go through the program. And if you have any questions, I'm definitely a point person to help you unpack some of that. 
we've had probably a lot of conversations over the summer with many of you about internships. So um, it's one of the highlights of this program is that you'll get to take advantage of the robust resources here in New York City. Um, so if you are in a position and you wanna take internships, um, we support academic internships once you've completed 15 credits in the program. For most students, this basically sums up to one year in the program, right? So in the summer, if you're starting to think about an internship, that's great. But we should be start thinking about it now. Let's start talking about it this semester, thinking about getting your resume in order, connecting you with your career advisor, which I'll talk about in a minute. And um, our program allows you to do those internships for zero or three credits. So the zero credit option is really most popular because there's no tuition attached to it. Um, and the three credit option can satisfy electives in your program. So we can definitely discuss what that looks like, but just obviously a sampling of some of the companies that are represented through the students who have done internships. But we normally have about 70 students in internships every year in our program. So we can connect you with those individuals and we'll be doing career panels and resources throughout the year um, that'll have employers coming in discussing their internship programs or pathways to careers. Um, again, I won't read all of this, but I'll do some quick highlights. You'll obviously get a copy of this in the um, QR link um, code if you haven't already uh, gotten it in your folder. Um, but there are things that a graduate student usually looks to for success. And so some of the things that you wanna think about at the forefront is engaging with your instructors and faculty, developing interest in and connecting with them. So many students get through their program with only talking to the instructors they have in class. They don't really reach out to the other folks who might have interesting um, connections within research uh, to the work that they're doing. So even if you don't have a, cl a class with a particular instructor, you can email them and talk to them. I read your bio. I saw this book you uh, wrote. It was really interesting. I, I heard this talk you did. Somebody recommended I take a class. Can I talk to you about it? Start engaging with our faculty. They will be your mentors in this program, whether they're officially assigned to you as an advisor or not. They will be the people that help um, enrich the program that you have. Um, I also think that this program is really grounded in the interdisciplinary work that the new school values. So start thinking about what types of additional experiences outside of the School of Media Studies you want to fold in. Is it um, additional research? Is it work in international affairs? Is it design work? For those of you who are in the uh, management program, we have other management programs here with courses you can take, some nonprofit work, uh, work in strategic design management. But we have things that you can fold your skills in if we don't have the exact course. So we can, we want to make sure that you're taking classes that go beyond the curriculum in the School of Media Studies and help enhance that. Um, I mentioned careers earlier. Plan them now. Start thinking about those goals now because a successful student, a student who, who is seeking success in this program doesn't wait till their final semester. And in fact, a student in this program who wants to get the most out of it will start thinking about the end of their program now. What looks like success for you when you leave? When you walk away from this program, what will make you feel like you accomplished your goals, like it was worth it? Will it be a portfolio, a series of internships, a business plan that you can take with you, a research paper that you can build into a, uh, to a PhD, PhD application, uh, the mentorship that we've discussed throughout, a field experience in, um, in Cuba? What are those things that are going to make this feel really special for you? Like, um, And so start telling us about what that is, and we'll start helping you curate and connect to those resources and making this a very individualized experience. Some important dates, because I can't not say these things. Uh, as you know, wait lists are gone. <laughs> they, they left the building. Uh, so that means at this point, um, registration ad drop goes until September 9th. September 9th is a Monday, so I'll be here if you have any questions. But over the weekends, if you see a course and you can't get into it, there's no one that's really going to help you. So just keep an eye on that. Um, September 9th is really far away for grad school. And I want to put that away in terms of, for some of you, if you register on September 9th, you might be entering into a class in week three. That's a lot. That's a long way away. So be in touch with instructors if you're thinking about entering a course in week three. Really talk to them about the work you've missed in that class before you jump into it. I, I want that to be a conversation that you and that instructor have, as opposed to being like, a happy surprise that day on week three that you show up to. So think about that. Um, it is 100% refund for ad drops all the way through the ninth, which is new this year. So that's exciting. Um, and then beyond that, uh, the, it, it declined. So let's talk before you drop anything after the ninth um, as well. 
tons of events that we have. There's no end to the events that are coming your way, but I wanna point out the first one. We'll be sending out links to our online webinar for next week where you'll be able to meet Hope Newman, your grad career advisor who's here at the new school and couldn't be here at orientation today. So we wanna make sure that you have a personal contact with her. Um, and she's here to help you look at resumes, to look at your cover letter, uh, look at the university resources for um, internships and career opportunities. Um, and she's going to be your lifeline in thinking about your career over the next couple years. And then we have a media studies student group specific to this program, and it's listed right there. And then as Vlad said, um, there's a number of events on here. I'm not gonna say every single one, but there is a festival of new, the uh, Centennial program from October 1st to October 6th, where there will be events everywhere that week. Um, so that's one to really mark off on your calendar. There's gonna be something every night, probably 10 things every night here that, of interest. Um, and then I would also highlight, of course, our Welcome Back Mixer, which is where we're going to be building community, connecting. You'll get to meet all of our continuing students in the program who will be there. Some of our faculty will be there. So um, that's on this floor when we say star. It's the place where our reception will be later. And that is the end of my piece on the advising. Um, but that is just the beginning of this evening. So we're actually going to be breaking out into two rooms. So those of you in the media management program are actually going to go into the room next door. Uh, so we're going to say goodbye to the MA folks. But right after this program at 730, we have a reception where we'll all come back together. So another welcome to you from me. My name's Donja, and similar to Vlad and all the faculty that serve as your pro uh, program directors and deans, I serve as associate dean, but I'm also full-time faculty and teach in the program. I've been teaching exclusively online um, because I'm very interested in that, that forum, and I've learned, I'll kind of look at the camera since it's online students who maybe we'll be tuning in that way or, or view the, the recording afterwards. I'm really interested in that modality of learning and how that fits in to our lives. And as a faculty member, very interested in how I can, with the student's participation, make the experience very meaningful, even though we're not in the room like this where we can like hear each other live and see our facial gestures and that sort of thing. So I, th I say this both for those students and also for you, because a lot of the courses in the program, um, both seminar and se uh, studio or, or production courses, might only be offered online. It might be the type of course that works best online. It might be a faculty member is teaching it that does live abroad, but you, being here as an on-site student, if you will, you may be interested in that, or your schedule may kind of dictate that you need a little bit more flexibility one semester. So you may find yourself taking online courses too. Has anybody thought about that already? Yeah? And was it because of time and travel or, or content and a little bit of each? Okay. So I do that. I teach media theory online each fall. I'm doing that this semester. Anybody taking online media theory with me? Yay. Okay. Good. Hi. I have some specific questions for you. I'm thinking of changing when I post the weekly lectures and how much time you have to respond. So I, uh, I'll query you tonight. I'm going to come find your cluster first. And I, I teach media ethics at the undergraduate level and then a course on um, animals as media. So we look at all the various ways that we as humans make mediations of animals from adver in advertising and film to Mickey Mouse, Chicken McNuggets, and other unbelievable things. Um, but so the purpose for right now is to really delve now into the curriculum um, from the perspective of you as a student. You've, you've seen these named areas of studies. You've seen the curriculum and the course titles and probably gone through the website, right? And so you, you got to beat on what the, what the program is in terms of what the program titles are and conversations with Robbie and everything. Um, and now you're, you're all registered, I think, right? Everybody get registered already for the fall? Okay. Um, so now it's real. Now you're really taking the classes. Now it's on your schedule. Um, I guess our next slide is the, the required courses in the program. But um, in essence, we try to like find 
categories and, and clusters of classes within the very broad offering of courses in the program. And the content in many of them do, does cross. You know, you're not going to say that a course that maybe fits in the media history, criticism, and philosophy section um, does not have anything to do with sound studies or transmedia, because it probably inevitably does. That's the pretty unique thing about media, right? It's applicable everywhere, and it can be looked at and approached and applied through many different th in many different thematic ways. That said, without or in addition now to the named minor in our program, the, the transmedia and digital storytelling, and some others across the university, these other areas of study allow you to really concentrate on a particular area and become more expert in that area through your time in the program. Um, you don't absolutely have to. You're not required to select an area of study. You can really traverse between them and that's always been the practice in this program, to really offer you a pretty wide array, a broad menu of choices that can really assist your interests, tune you into new ones, and support really where you want to go. And so knowing this and reading about this, our, our newly designed and launched website um, features these pretty clearly and has links to the courses that correspond to them on offer this semester and next semester. So that's another thing to look at as you think about what about spring 2020 already? And then what about next year? And how do I, how can I smartly sequence my courses together? So here are the requirements. And this you know, I think. Um, I'll ask, I'll pause in a moment for, for some questions in between things. But you'll see that, and you've heard from the beginning, I think, as you've probably researched the program, that we really try to keep the required courses to a minimum so that you have the majority of your time to explore the courses in those, those subject areas and to make the meaningful pairings. You'll find some of you gravitate the same ways. You'll find some of you, after the, your, your, your common experiences, maybe in media theory and media design, go very different ways, but come back together in another class later. So these three courses, the media theory course, the media design course, and a course in the subject of research methods. This isn't a, there is a course called research methods, frankly, and it's an overview of all the different methodologies undertaken in, in researching media subjects, but there's others. There's specific research methods courses, say those for documentary or participatory media, among others. In any case, in both options there, we're going to read vertical and horizontal and back and forth for a minute, um, you'll see that those nine credits are the common required courses and credits, attendant credits for each, each option. Um, the first two, theory and design, they're designed to be taken right away, first semester. I'm sure you've been advised that way. And the reason being is they're not, you know, the easy classes you're supposed to take first so you can get onto the better stuff. It's not that at all. It's so that you have a really solid foundation and you've been exposed to and had a whole semester's time being able to really deeply consider what the theories and considerations about how media is made and functions and resonates and gets questioned and critiqued and churned, you know, um, historically. And now, how, how, does, how do those theories really continue to um, inform us about how media functions now and how we, as media makers and scholars, function now? And beyond that, what about emergent practices? Are, are some of these theories about how we as humans function in, in, with our media and in communication and in our artistic practices, um, some of them are going to sound like, wow, that, that was written, you know, during a uh, hundred years ago, and what was happening then is nothing like that now. But wait a minute, wow, social media is a lot like that. Freaky. So maybe there are some things about us as humans that we do cycle through again and again in, in terms of our tendencies, right? And these are very, very important things to think about. There's no yes or no or right or wrong answers to all of this theoretical examination of media, but more as a preparation to be able to 
understand its function and its making, its reception, its cyclicalness, if you will, in all the different modalities that have been and are and, and will continue to be produced. Um, so that's my self and media theory. But I really mean it. I really, I really uh, teach media theory, and I really enjoy media theory. Um, media design, very similarly, is an experiential, hands-on tour of all the interconnected, convergent ways of making media. And there's theory involved there as well. So there's design theory. There's um, commu well, communication design, visual theory, thinking about how the audio, audio and the video function together. Um, what about juxtaposition? What about pacing? What about genre? How do all of these different treatments and strategies interact in the making of any particular message? So it's really, it's really good to like, take both co courses together. Think theoretically, get your hands working um, as, you, as you make. And then both courses, I'm talking still about theory and design, not research methods yet, um, really prepare you as you go into the other courses um, because you, you've got that background. You know, in, in, your, in your reading and your references to made works, you're going to recognize the writers, the names, the references, and have at least a taste of what direction and intention those individuals came from. Research methods, not good to take first semester. In fact, I don't think any advisor is really going to tell you to do that, although each of you are completely different. Um, research methods is really the course where you can start and get to a very intermediate level of preparing your research, say, for your eventual thesis project or a film. We say film a lot, and I'm going to say that, you know, film has become like the word Kleenex in a way for the media piece. Say your installation, your audio work, your website, your app, whatever the media product is that, or a form is that you're, you're thinking you want to construct, um, you do research for that too, obviously, right? What's the content? Who are the people? What's the place? What is the history to the content that you're going to be addressing in your work? So that A course, a three credit course in re research methods is one of your requirements. But it's not required first semester or first year. Then all of the fungibility comes in. How many seminar courses do you take? How many studio or production courses do you take? There's some minimums there. You need to take at least two production hands-on courses beyond the media design preparatory one. But then you can take more. You need to take at least four seminar courses. So those are your minimums. But then it's up. we leave that math open because you're going to have different um, desires and needs and aspirations that maybe somebody only needs or wants to take two of the production courses, the required. But then all of the seminar courses are more beneficial to you. And then another of you is going to be the complete opposite. And then the majority of you might be somewhere in the middle. OK, so that's the math. And right now is a, is a great time because it's all completely open. As you start to sketch and say, OK, here I am this first semester with my nine credits my two required courses and a seminar or something. And the next semester, that's going to make me ready to move on to these courses, and I'm going to take those. And then you start to sketch out the next year. Suddenly, you're going to have clicked off all these numbers, right? You're, you're, you're going to have those minimums in each column. So it's really, really important to do that forecasting early on, like the what ifs, so that you can have conversations with your advisors and say, all right, what about these what ifs? You know, where where's the particular topical course that I really know I'm going to want while I take this other course? What semester does that align with? Okay, and the commons that that Vlad mentioned, the site there, um, you can look at the course grids from the previous semesters. Has everyone found that site yet? The commons. Yeah, if you haven't, well, <laughs> okay, Barry, we'll give you the, the latest link. Um, so you have the course grid for this semester, but look back at last semester, too, because that's going to give you an indication about what the coming spring will be, right? And get your questions together, bring them to us as faculty, 
you'll be it'll be told to you who among us uh, is your assigned advisor so reach out to us but like Mary Vlad and everyone else said look at everyone's bio contact us we'll all give you um, advice both practically and, and qualitatively to your your questions and then thesis non thesis you're not required to do a thesis in this program the majority of students don't in fact the majority of students complete via the non-thesis option. The total credit numbers are the same, as you see. Only in the, the only difference is that, well, in terms of credit numbers, in the thesis option, there are those three credits associated with the thesis. Currently, that's over three different semesters. You spend one semester putting together your proposal for the thesis, the following semester working in a group it's called thesis tutorial, doing the work, getting the project ready to be. And then in the third semester, thesis supervision, working with the advisor to complete the writing, complete the production, et cetera. So it's a very in-depth, committed involvement with a lot of formal research and documentation. Um, the non-thesis option does not require that. Doesn't mean it's less of an option. I have a, I'm working with a student now who has elected the non-thesis option. I know we all have as faculty. And her idea was to come out of the program with a portfolio of works, papers, and projects. So she worked over two semesters to write, to ideate and write and complete a script. Got that done via an independent study with a faculty member. Another project is an interactive photographic installation project. She's working on completing that this semester and researching and writing about it and looking for ways to exhibit, et cetera. So that's her completion work. It's not her thesis, but for her, it satisfies what she needs. So for each of you, this is going to be highly individual. Uh, for those of you who really do want or find that you want or are encouraged to write a thesis, you'll be told to get into one of the research methods courses that really aligns and prepares you at the right moment. It might be second semester. It might be your third semester. So the requirements are the same, kind of, for everyone. Only those nine credits. And that's great, too, because that helps you get into a cohort the first semester, too. You know, you'll be... Some, some students in your media theory class this semester and your media design class this semester will be second semester students because you're not required very first semester. It's, it's my opinion and I think most everyone else is um, best to take it first semester, but for variety of reasons, some stu students take one or the other the second semester, but you're still new students in a sense, first, first year students. And I, that's, that's great because you're starting at the same points and you'll, you'll take that common experience further. So does that all make sense? Have I over-explained it? OK, you feel comfortable with what you're registered in, understand where those courses are in your degree, planning? Okay. How many of you come with um, media studies backgrounds already in a BA or a BFA program, cultural studies? OK, that's an asset. Yeah, did you work with a lot of media making in your programs already? A little bit? Was it? Yeah, okay, okay. Varied, really, okay. Yeah, that's common, and that's good, actually. It's great to be able to info share with each other and, and share the experiences. Um, okay, so no questions really about Barry, do you have a question about required course? <laughs> uh, yes. What if you have production experience? Can I waive any of these classes or research experience? Yeah. Who has that question? It is possible. It is absolutely possible. For the, the media design course, that, and that's related to the question I just asked you. If you came out of one of those programs, a BFA program or something, where you really did get a lot of hands on, you, you've got a grasp. Uh, uh, around making media, shooting photography, video, sequencing it, editing it digitally, adding audio, maybe knowing some titling and graphics, maybe knowing some coding and, and even app building. Um, 
if that course is going to be too redundant to what you already know, we're not going to make you take that course. You'll be waived from the course. You'll talk to one of our faculty members. Or Robbie's always the first line for making any request to waive, starting with media design, but also research methods, as, as Vlad said. Um, he's always your first line to make a request, and then he'll put you in touch with a faculty member to have a conversation and assess. If a determination is found that that course content is going to be too redundant, you're not going to take it. It'll be waived. You don't automatically get the credit for media design, you just don't need media design, and you're able then to take another course. Usually it's another production course if you're so inclined. And then really similarly for the research methods cor required course as well. Some of you write undergraduate theses already? Take, yeah, a couple of you, right? Did you have to take kind of a formal course to gear up for that? All right, same convert. Yes, no, maybe. See, that's why it's a conversation, right? You don't want to miss out on, some, on a course that can really assist you and equip you to do this and do this better and especially um, prepare you to write the thesis or the final project or the, or the preparation for your media project. But you also don't want to be in a course that's completely redundant to whatever you've already done. So you look at the description. You talk to Robbie, we look at the syllabus, you check back to your syllabus and what you remember and what you've done, we have this conversation. And then completely similar, if you have already achieved what we have in place for you to learn in the research methods courses, then you don't take research methods, you get three other credits of seminar work. And one of the seminar courses will very highly function as such a research methods course if it's a topical course on something that you're you're researching. So if you have that question, you do, but that's so far, and you'd already be in the third week. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So you're registered for media design now. Okay. And so for you, for everybody, right away, immediately, first class, you're going to be going through the syllabus. You got the faculty member there face to face. You have this conversation. Ask questions. Don't be shy. You know, to what extent are we going to go into this aspect of making and knowing? Um, what do you think about where I reside, et cetera? And um, if you think, yeah, that's just going to be, you know, nine out of 15 weeks, everything I know, whatever degree, then then um, speak to Robbie and let's move you out of it. Yeah. For your ad drop. So for the recording, I'll just repeat that. Barry Salmon's reminding us that in the fall schedule, there are two, I think they're each other week, right? Um, Monday class sessions with, that aren't held because of holidays, Jewish holidays. And so that can really prolong things. Um, I'm not remembering at the moment if there is a media design on a Monday. But in any case, you can email your faculty, too, ahead of time and ask for the syllabus and initiate the conversation right away. Nobody's going to take offense at you doing that. Nobody's going to say, what, you think you know more? You don't need to be in my class. They want to help you out that way, too. Yes. Typically not. Um, and Robbie can explain this further, but it really has to do with scholarship. And for international students, visas and such, um, typically is the key word there. If you, and this is another reason to start sketching things out right away. You might, a lot of of you do, you, you look through the course catalog and you list all the courses that you're interested in and they're way more than 39. <laughs> so you do, you do need to make some decisions. Um, but then you do it very practically. Which are the courses you need? What really is realistic? You know, how much time does graduate study actually take? Um, in some cases, particularly with students who are doing the MA like you are and elect to also complete the certificate in media management. Not the full MS degree, because you've chosen this one, but taking four courses of the media management coursework, completing a paper, having proper advisement, et cetera, counts as your seminar credits 
and then can also earn you the graduate certificate in media management. It may be that you decide to do this a little later, like third semester, and doing so is going to exceed you. That's one reason that's not your case now because you know ahead of time. Um, but there may be some other valid reason. So that's an individual, an individual case. And it wouldn't be too many credits over in any case. Questions so far? You'll register each semester a few months prior to the start of the new semester. Here you've just started, so it kind of depended on when you got your acceptance all finalized and everything, and now you've been registered. So the spring semester, which will start late January, you'll register for that in November. So you'll have time to get your eyes on the upcoming curriculum plenty early, and then the same thing going forward. Yeah. If you've taken graduate courses in a non-degree status, we do allow that for students in other programs, is that the situation? And earned the graduate credit for it, then yes, there is the, the way by which you can transfer that credit in to your degree requirements. You're not required to transfer your credit. So you hold an MA from a new school degree program already and you're citing what you've seen in our degree requirements that those of you in, that have just started and don't have a degree from the new school already or maybe another graduate degree, we do allow you to transfer graduate credit in, similar to both questions, right? Um, there's a maximum of nine credits. So if you started another program but maybe it was a subject you didn't fulfill, uh, but it, the content of the course, the subject matter of the course does fulfill our thematic, it's very possible you can transfer that in towards your, to count towards some of these degree requirements. Um, this is the same mechanism, like Vlad was talking about taking courses in Parsons School of Design. This would be taking courses outside your media studies program, but having them count toward your degree program. Um, that's kind of a transfer credit situation too. So everybody's going to be a little similar. You may have some from a previous program. You've got some from a degree. It depends on which courses thematically, where they fit in this degree plan. Um, and you're not required, however. You can hold them back. You're welcome. And then for, the re for those of you who don't have those other graduate programs already in hand from other programs, that transfer business means you may take something from Parsons, you may think, take something from Milano or from um, International Affairs, those are the real common, or philosophy, sociology in the new school for social research. Yeah. Um, I'm registered. Mm -hmm. It's in school of, new school for social research, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> for the, the answer to should I talk to somebody in media studies is always yes, for whatever it is, just in case, right? Um, I, I'm familiar with that course. I think it's Jim Miller's course in liberal studies. Oh, no, this is something else. It's Maya's course. Hmm. You've seen it too? Oh, you went to the X reality. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. Oh, Wiley. I thought you were talking about X reality center and publishing. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So, yes, it very likely will count towards your degree. It's all about media. It needs to be graduate. The only question will be. Is it seminar? Is it studio? 
in this case, I think it probably is 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 a seminar. That's right. Yeah. Oh, good. You're registered for it. You want to take it? Did you try and it's full? Ah. Okay. Check the link as we talk and <laughs> see if there's a space. So, yeah, I mean, in general, we want to make it as, as easy and as possible as we can for you to take these courses that really suit your interests. You got to seek them out. And you got to talk to us to have, um, and each other, clearly, to, to get the leads to which ones they might be. All right. Good for now. I'm not even sure actually what the other slides are. Okay, well, I jumped ahead with that one. Media Management Certificate. This is four courses. <clears throat> They're not absolutely dictated, although there is a little bit of a natural order to the media management courses, media economics and media management and leadership being the natural two orientation broad scope courses in the media management program. Anybody interested in that? Again, talk to, start with your assigned advisor and you'll meet at the reception tonight, Michelle Mater, who is another full-time faculty, working, teaching and directing the media management program. And there are other media management faculty you can talk to directly. Anybody interested in that too, maybe? <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, that's a good one to start with. That one or media management leadership. Yeah, and you don't have to go for and complete the certificate if you wanna just take a media management course or two media management courses, something like that. It's completely open. You can start into it without deciding that that's gonna be your track and you're gonna use 12 credits to do that certificate. But the time does pass quickly, so you want to think about it early on. Feel pretty equipped with my explanation, thesis, non-thesis. On the outset, what changes the conversation entirely are your particular ideas. Right? I want to research this sort of subject. I want to make media around this subject. I want to do both. I want to make a film and an audio piece and a website and an installation, and I want to write a podcast. That's a conversation. There's probably something in there that you can do as part of a class. Another one is an independent study. Maybe it's a thesis if the, th if the thematic goes all the way through. Conversation. And early enough, try out your ideas in your assignments in class the starts of them anyway. We see a lot of work produced in the program um, that begins in one class, the research for a particular idea, then gets touched upon in maybe a production class, some interviews with people involved, a documentary on the subject, an experimental treatment, and then finds its way through different pieces of, of research methods class or a media economics class, right? So it's all a conversation. How can I realize my ideas, experiment with them, realize them further, and should it then be, does it have to be a thesis? Does it, can it be done via independent study easier? Do I even need either? Can I accomplish everything I want through my coursework and my networking with other students and my, inter and my internships maybe? Lots more resources and tools. Scour the website, tap and look and visit the offices. See what workshops are offered. Go to events. Just get out and about and see what everything, what all the offices offer on campus and online. And if you don't know, ask us. Any particular questions about any of the services, resources, tools, something you might be curious about that don't find, you haven't found listed?
there'll be more time. Here's some of those events, and these are just the School of Media Studies. You'll get a weekly email, if you haven't already, as admitted students, that is a compendium or bullet points from the news articles on the Media Studies blog, also linked to this site called The Commons. So weekly, you'll get announcements for events, internships, jobs, including research assistant positions with faculty in the department and other departments in the university. Okay, so let's, let's chat in smaller groups if we can. We have a few faculty with us tonight, myself and Vlad. We also have Rafael Para raising his hand. They're the faculty are already grouped here. Kind of. <laughs> Diane Mitchell, right there with them. And also, hmm? We do that at the reception, apparently. But uh, we can do it in the smaller groups. They, they asked us to do small groups, but we've got this kind of funny room. We'll make it work, I think. Amir Husak and Barry Salman. And our students. Now, I have to admit, I don't know our students that well. I know, who am I missing? Oh, I'm sorry, Fabiola. Hi, Fabiola and Josh. So all the faculty are back here. Let's, let's kind of get together and just talk. I'll try, I'll try to start it off. I'll come find a group of you and sit with you, introduce, and just chat. And like, like Diane just mentioned, there are going to be faculty introductions. Robbie tells me when we... Yeah, here then, say, introduce. Hi, I'm more than just a slide on the screen. You'll see it at the, <laughs> I teach design, I teach research classes that are based where you're doing design research and interaction design, which is obviously a very hot area, especially with Google and Amazon taking over the universe. But it's kind of what interactions do we as people want with our devices and our apps and visualizing from a humanities point of view. And I also teach production courses where we work on media advocacy, also very hot items, climate change, race, uh, migrants, all kinds of issues, and also branding, getting yourself ready for doing whatever you want to do. And I also do motion graphics, so lots of things. So come talk to me if you're interested in design or just changing the world. Hi, I'm Rafael. Uh, this semester I'm teaching two classes. One is uh, projects in digital video editing, and the second one is the aesthetics of editing. So by the name of those two classes, you know my, that my area of expertise is post-production, both uh, film and television. Uh, I'm the editor of a popular show that I guess you all know, uh, Sesame Street, and also <laughs> Plaza Sesamo, that is the international version. So yes, if you're, if you're interested in post-production, if you're uh, interested in uh, television production, in uh, filmmaking, just come and talk to me. Uh, my office hours this semester are th uh, Thursdays from 4 to 7 p.m. But again, those are the official schedule uh, office hours. You don't have to see me on those hours if you can make it during those hours. You can just send me an email and say, Rafael, can we schedule a different uh, time slot? And I'll be happy to meet with you outside of those office hours. So yes, welcome and looking forward to working with you. Hello, congratulations and welcome. Um, you're, my name is Amir Husak. I'm an assistant professor of media studies, also the director of the graduate certificate in documentary media studies here at the New School. Um, it's amazing, you're gonna have two to three years of kind of transformative experiences, I would say, in many ways, also because next year, don't forget to vote, those of you who can vote, and vote early, vote often. Um, my work, my artistic work, and my research, my teaching, explores um, documentary as social practice, I'm particularly interested in emergent forms of documentary. As you know, there are so many different forms of nonfiction uh, out there of content. Podcasts, people are mentioning podcasts. There are even games. 
traditional films, webzodes, uh, web series. Um, I'm sure you all are familiar with these. If you have interest in these, you want to talk about it, if you're considering something like that for your thesis, come to talk to me, email me. If I don't answer within 15 minutes, don't, don't, don't think I'm not going to answer. There's always, there's always emails, emails. So often I describe my uh, job as like, well, I'm writing and answering emails very often. It's like that. So don't be disheartened if I don't answer right away. Um, I'll definitely answer eventually. Uh, but also feel, st feel free to stop by at my office. Uh, this semester I'm teaching a media design course on Thursday. Anyone in that class? I will see you Thursday. Um, and also teaching a foundations of uh, documentary practice, but that's actually a documentary studies uh, certificate course, and only those students are allowed in it. Next semester, I'll be teaching probably documentary, uh, um, emerging, um, emerging media and the documentary practice, which looks at expanded forms of documentary. So maybe I'll see some of you in that class. Welcome again. Fabio, I'm so sorry. I'm not used to picking your faces out. These are our newest faculty members, our newest full-time faculty members. We're so pleased to add to the roster. My sincere apologies. <laughs> I'll, I'll kind of go this way. We have a few students with us tonight, too, if you'd like to say a couple words. Yeah, of course. Hi, how are you? My name is Marcos. Uh, I'm a MA student of the Media Studies program. Uh, my interests are, are around transmedia storytelling, documentary, and new media. So probably you're interested in these areas. Uh, just get, talk, talk to me, and I will like help you to probably guide uh, to help you to, to understand and to pick up some classes around these areas. You'll start to see each other at events and such too. And are you working explicitly with the Doc Studies program? Yeah. I saw you at orientation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Pardon me, I'm a little hoarse. Um, I have something called LPR, which is a, anyway, acid reflux thing. Uh, but um, you mentioned a hot topic. You know, a hot topic right now for me is is the Amazon. And I'm kind of wondering how the world is, is going to manage with 20% less oxygen. That's something that I'd like to, well, I, I teach sound studies. I don't know, that doesn't have a lot to do with sound studies. I'd like to think of sound both as an adjective and and as a noun. <laughs> so, and uh, I'm teaching a course uh, this semester on um, sound design, which can be thought of as post, audio post, but it can also be thought of as its own, own element. And I'm teaching a course, uh, the me required media theory course as well. And um, my own background is a, a musician, and I got a couple other degrees, music and philosophy. And, um, that about wraps it up. Uh, I look forward to meeting with you, um, discussing things in the world. I think that's always a good thing to do, see how we can hopefully modify it a bit. OK, thank you. Um, I don't even need a mic, because I'm no, very loud. Need need so, <laughs> she was in one of my classes. The of this. Um, OK. I'm Cheyenne. This is my second year here. Um, Oh, for oh, the recording. Sorry. Yes, I have a oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about that. Yeah. Can everyone hear me now? Still? Okay, great. Um, I'm Cheyenne. This is my second year here. Um, my main focus is screenwriting and some podcasting and like digital content creation. I'm actually working on my thesis right now, too, which is based on body positivity and lack of um, fat femmes and people are larger bodied in media. And I want to explore that through a web series that I'm creating. Um, and basically, if you have any questions about the program, about the thesis option, or just anything in general, I'm here to talk about it. I'm Josh Scannell. I'm new, so I can't really tell you anything about this program yet. Um, I am a digital media theorist. Uh, my own research works uh, largely in carceral studies, critical carceral studies, police technology, surveillance. Uh, and I work on that from an abolitionary perspective. So I do a lot of work in uh, critical queer studies, critical race studies, um, in order to try to think through the re relationship between media, digital technologies, political economies, and how they produce different populations for exploitation and expropriation. So that's me. Hi, um, I'm Fabiola Hanna. 
I'm new as well. Looking forward to working with all of you. Um, I am, my official title is Assistant Professor of Emerging Media. So I do a lot of um, digital media, uh, software art, um, any kind of production that is dig digital, which encompasses a lot. Um, I'll be teaching um, design media or media design on Wednesdays and a research methods class on Tuesday evenings. So if you're any, in any of these, please come talk to me. Love to meet you. Like I'm in a game show. Any <laughs> dun, 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 dun. music? Hi, everybody. I'm Casey. This is my last semester in the program. Um, it's been great. My focus is on writing and directing, really, and hopefully teaching once I graduate. So if anybody has any questions in regards to those goals, you can ask me, and I'll let you know what classes I took, recommendations, any of that. So nice to meet you all. Um, yeah, my name's Ono. Pleasure to meet you guys. Hello, Amir. Um, and Vlad, homies. Uh, yeah, I'm my second year now of the program, and I came in with a lot of interest in um, like coloniality and, yeah, pretty much like post-colonial studies, and it's proliferated more now and getting more interested in um, media activism and doc studies. And yeah, hit me up if you have any questions. <laughs> 